loopholes in it that I don't know about. I'm not an attorney, but I, I think the the fact of the matter is, um, it wants to come along uh, as clear as possible. Um, black people can't afford to have these missteps. We can't. We're in a fight. We're in a fight here in the state of Georgia. That's why this thing has been busting out the seams as the way it has. That's why we were ranked number two in early voting nationally, right behind Texas. We are in a fight. People here understand they're in a fight. And what we have to do is we got to get the folks that don't represent the people in spirit that are going up under that gold dome, calling themselves Democrats, out. Because this has got to be about the people. It's not about the people. This thing is going to fall apart. And I'm not here for anything to fall apart. I'm here to organize, mobilize. I'm here to make an impact. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, comrades, friends, if I may go so far. This is Sound Podcast. And I'm your host, DJ Pinhead. And yes, my son made that art. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, we have a really good one for you today. Uh, we have a few good ones for you today. <clears throat> today we're going to be talking about Representative Misha Maynard. I believe she's a, a representative in Atlanta District 56. Um, she defected to the Republican Party. Now, I don't really have a problem with that. But I will... I will beg the question, or I will ask, was this in good faith? Was she, is she, was she actually even a Democrat? I mean, when you look at this woman's record to some degree, if you look, not some degree, you look at this woman's record, uh, from what I found so far, she doesn't necessarily seem to be a champion of the working class. And here at the Center Podcast, we don't really have an issue calling out Republicans, Democrats, whoever they are. We just, well, I just call it like it is. Um, and I give my opinion. This is an opinion show. Um, so whether you agree with me, me or not, um, I don't think it really makes a huge difference. But here or there, we're going to discuss whether or not this was genuine, good faith. And we're going to look at a few things. But first, we're going to look at this tweet that she put up most recently <sighs> my name is representative misha maynard and today i made the decision to leave the democrat party i represent a blue district in the city of atlanta so this was wasn't a political decision for me it was a moral one i will never apologize for being a black woman with a mind of my own um i don't know with what she's talking about at that last part um who said that she couldn't think for herself i think the issue is the fact that it appears that she gave a bs answer as to why she moved over to the republican party and she she just wanted to push a particularly republican agenda and i mean i wouldn't be surprised honestly if she was a plant the whole time but well, listen to what she has to say about it, because naturally that's fair. Um, I wouldn't want to take put any words in my mouth or anything else. I think hearing what she has to say will provide some clarity, and then we'll look at some other things that are involved, and you guys can judge for yourselves. Well, given that, it, does it sound like are you truly a Republican now, or it was just politically expedient to to be that now? Then, based on that. So when I came into office, um, I came in as a Democrat. I've mm -hmm. been a Democrat my entire life. That's all I knew. It wasn't until becoming a policymaker, actually looking at the policy, digging in into the fine details that many people said, okay, you're actually not a Democrat. You are a centrist or you are a moderate. As a layperson, had no idea that that was such a thing. And now I am still a moderate and still a centrist, but just on the Republican side. When you you are for re-election, I believe in in 2024, and I, I do wonder what your constituents. Um... So, fair enough. We heard that uh, reasoning. Now let's move on to a little bit further down the line. 
Here we go. Um, I will say this. It's not about party. I am not expecting the Republican Party to be perfect. Uh, my Republican colleagues have said, welcome, Representative Maynard. Please know that we are not perfect. It really is a policy issue. So if you are against children being able to have a choice when 97% of the kids don't know how to read, that's a policy issue. Mm -hmm. If you want to defund the police, that's a policy issue. If you want to put um, prosecutors or systems above families that are seeking justice, that's a policy issue. So once my colleagues started putting up thousand dollar checks on social media. Mind you, let's just keep on. She said this is, these are all policy issues. So we're going to look at the policy in a second. But keep in mind, this, this is what she mentioned. This is a policy issue. And I'm, based on the policy she, based on the policy she supports, it doesn't seem like she's a Democrat at all. For anybody to run against me, I did some self-reflection. Self-reflection said, okay, why is this happening? It's a policy issue. Every single policy issue that is important to my community was a policy issue that the Republican Party- Guys, we should have we should have seriously counted how many times she says policy issue. Like, I don't need, I think, I, I don't understand the word salad that I'm hearing right now. Can you just tell us what it is, what, pol what policies are you talking about, lady? Party was supporting. So it, it's not party, it's really policy. Who is supporting oh my, my community? Who is trying to mm. uplift my community? I tell people, mm. look oh, around mm. you. The schools are failing. We have high crime. There is not a Republican in office, so we can't blame Republicans. Um, Guys, the interviewer is so enthralled. Oh, my God. Democrats need to blame themselves for the problems in our community. And I'm just trying to make a difference, honestly. It certainly is your choice and how you want to run and your constituents' choice and who they want to lead. There are, of course, there's a Republican. Guys, did she name a policy? Republican majority already in your assembly. This widens that particular gap. But final question, now that you are a Republican, the head of your party happens to be the former president, Donald Trump, at least. Um, okay. At, in so, uh, don't care about that. Because uh, I'm left feeling like, okay, you went over to the, we, I, I'm, I'm a Georgia voter. I'm in that district. They got issues with like trains stopping in the middle of the community. And, you know, there's a bunch of poor people that live there. There's a lot of crime, stuff like that. Well, I don't know how true that last part is. Don't necessarily quote me on that. But at the end of the day, I voted you in as a Democrat. And most Democrats, specifically those who are black, those kind of people are her huge voting constituency. Those those type of voters almost would never vote for a Republican. Now, I am curious to know what the community says about this. And... We're going to hear from somebody in the community. This is uh, from Roland Martin's show. Shout out to Roland Martin. Uh, I think a brother named Dante Carter. He's pretty straightforward about what what he feels is going on here. So we're going to go to the interview with Roland Martin. But she did not respond to our request. Joining us now from Sandy Springs, Georgia, is the chair of the North Fulton Democrats, Dante Carter. Dante, glad to have you here. So this is I, what... So the district is 90% Democrat. So how is she representing her constituents by becoming a Republican if her constituents are 90% Democrat? Yeah, and overwhelmingly black. And I think uh, that's part of the reason why I'm wearing this shirt today, Justice for Jimmy. Uh, we're, I'm speaking of Jimmy Atchison here. Jimmy's case is one of the many cases of why he stepped into this role as the North Fulton Dems chair, because it was important to ensure that the concerns of the people in my community were being heard. Uh, one of the things that uh, Representative Maynard has done is done a great job of elevating the voices of these families, uh, such as uh, Jimmy Hill's fa uh, Jimmy Atchison's family. His father's name is Jimmy Hill. She's done a great job of elevating these voices. Um, she'll put the proclamations out saying that she stands, um, she stands for police accountability and, um, and elevating them, bringing the cameras around. And of course, 
um, what, uh, what our chair, Nakima Williams, has um, really uh, hit at is the fact that she's done all these things for personal gain. It hasn't been about the people. Um, and and I, I want to challenge people to look at her record, look at what she's done for her community. She talks a lot about education, but what have you done for education? What have you done for your community? What have you done for economic development? What have you done to make that impact? What have you done to fight back against gentrification and actually keep your residents in their homes. And there's there's a lot that's being said. I've spoken to people in their district. Um, so this is what I mean about just trying to be objective and calling it out for what it is. Like, I'm all for hearing this, this, um, this woman's side of the story. But when you listen to her side of the story, all she does is repeat the word. This is a, she repeat the words. This is about policy. This is about policy. This is about policy. Yet you speak to somebody in an actual community and they say, uh, th th it's inconsistent. They're saying that, well, she's not necessarily doing what she says she's doing. We, what is she doing? Where is she? You know? Um, Jimmy Hill is one of those people, and that's why I'm wearing this shirt, because at the end of the day, um, what she... And mind you, shout out to this brother for actually giving her credit, you know, about bringing light to the to the issues that were in the community. But it appears that she's doing only one part of the work, you know. She did is she laid a whole lot of people out to dry. She didn't hold up the people. We're going over to a party where the governor, a Democrat elected official, and dragged her out of the, the Capitol. Um, you have a Park Cannon on your show, you're familiar with that story. We're talking about going over there, finding a party that's been active in suppressing black votes. How does that benefit your community? Well, here's what I don't understand. First of all, I support school. Great, 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 great point. You know, like, at the end of the day, if I'm a voter in her district, that's one of the main things I'm talking about. That's one of the main things that I'm even thinking about. Because as a, as a, person who's left the democratic party like i still work with democrats democrats are still the people who who unfortunately are closest to my self-interest um but there's no way i'm moving over to the republican party i mean they don't really have any of the social values that i share and if what she's saying is that it's a moral thing well then you just mean what Christian nationalism, a Christian nationalist kind of like thing. You believe um, in the things that Ron DeSantis believes in. Do you believe like she's not and she doesn't even necessarily say anything. Um, I want to move on to a, a, a different part that was quite interesting. Simple as that, uh, Rebecca. Oh, guys, keep in mind, his Internet is choppy. This is not this is not us. Just just so you know. So, you know, I, I think Maynard needs a civic lesson here, because the last time I checked, the Georgia House of Representatives is overwhelmingly Republican. The last time I checked, the Georgia Senate is overwhelmingly Republican, which means that if anything is going to pass in the Georgia House or Senate, it's going to have to be fully supported by um, Republicans in the Georgia Senate and Georgia House. So my question, or I guess maybe my comment here is, if 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 Maynard is upset that there isn't a greater push for school reform by the use of vouchers, or if she's upset that there isn't um, an increase in public safety, or if she's upset, what was the other thing she said she was upset about? Um, I think it was about um, victims' rights. Um, wouldn't that actually be the party that she just joined, fought that those things haven't happened legislatively in Georgia? Good point. Very good point. Georgia? You know, I got, a, I got a shirt on representing one of those victims, right? And so, again, this isn't about... Republicans are not going to push for police accountability. So even though she brought them cameras around, what did she do it for? Because she just joined a party that's not going to push for... Uh, uh, getting rid of qualified immunity. The, this isn't about the people. This is about her agenda. And I think we got to be clear on that. Um, hmm. I, I chair the party up here in North Fulton. I, let's be honest. We pulled the attendance sheets. She hasn't been to any meetings in Fulton County 
in Atlanta, Georgia. She yeah. hasn't paid any membership dues. Where's her organizing? These are volunteer organizations. Where is she doing the work? You're mad about these issues, but where where's the organizing? Where's the volunteer work? Where are you putting the time to actually get a base together so that we can not only get you more elected officials to help you to swing some of these votes, but actually have people showing up for you? This isn't this isn't about the people, and that's what it's about. It's about her agenda and Yep. And and my heart hurts the most for the people that relied on her, for, for the people that trusted her, for the people that voted for her. That's who I'm hurting for right now, because they're the folks looking at her and they're asking the question of why did you do this and why are we feeling as though you failed us? Kelly. I, I, I hear no lies, man. I hear absolutely no lies there. Um, if I was a voter in that district, I would feel some type of way. Because you're not going to be supportive of all of the things that I would have voted you in there in the first place. So, you, like, what what's going to happen now? Now, maybe her constituents heard her conservative Democratic platform and voted her in. I, you know, but from what I can tell, it doesn't seem like that's the case. And even further, she make, she's making this big deal about the fact that this is school choice well let's let's take a look at the bill she's talking about this is hilarious bill sb 233 key takeaway senate bill 233 is conservatively projected to cost an additional $150 million upon full implementation. Uh, this voucher would divert public funds from schools serving majority black students and majority and majority living in poverty. State lawmakers concerned about Georgia's children should reject two, <laughs> SB 233 and consider legislation like SB 284 or SB 668, which provide additional funding for students who need it most. Um, the the summary the, the Georgia Senate recently passed a bill that would funnel public state dollars into private schools Senate Bill 233 would create a promise scholarship or PSA another name for a voucher for families to pay private school tuition or qualified education expenses with funds from the state government this bill would set aside $6,000 per academic year into consumer direct accounts a family acceptance of this fund would act as a refusal of federal protections for students with disabilities and state laws for inadequate public education, such as the background checks for teachers. Guys, why in God's green earth, if I'm a voter in that district, would I vote for that? Why? Think about this. Like, not only am I taking money out of the public schools my bad the public schools that are going to my community why i would want to do that i don't know um <laughs> but let's say i do do that then i give up federal protections for the fact that for for teachers that <sighs> then i have to give up federal protections and background checks for the teachers that are available to me so then why would i vote against my own self-interest it's the silliest thing. And then, okay, so so let's look at the article in the AP. Georgia House GOP break ranks to doom the voucher bill. And thank God that they did. Thank God that they did. Uh, rural Georgia Republicans defend lobbying from defend lobbying from Governor Brian Kemp and conservative groups on Wednesday to vote down a proposed state voucher plan funding private school tuition and homeschooling. A total of 16 House Republicans against the bill, sending it down to an 89 to 85 defeat, with Democrat opponents literally leaping for joy as the bill defeat became clear. Only one Democrat voted for the measure. Guess who that one Democrat was? (laughs) 
It took 16 Republicans. <laughs> 16 Republicans to make sure that this doesn't pass. Now, let's ultimately look at why. The vote illustrates how protected many rural conservatives remain of the public school systems that are the heartbeat of their communities. Those feelings endure despite a nationwide GOP way for supporters to call education savings accounts following the pandemic uh, for what supporters call education saving, savings accounts following the pandemic and amid culture war fights over what children should learn in public schools. Guys, these these conservatives in Georgia understand that this bill doesn't make any sense and that it's a vote against their self-interest. If anything, they would want to pump more money into the public into their public school system, which is what normally anybody would want to do. Now, you get six thousand dollars for these schools, right? Well, let's look at educationdata.org says about the average cost of public schools in Georgia. 11,541 uh, is the average for the tuition among K through 12 schools in Georgia. You're only getting $6,000. So if you come from a, a family, even a two parent household that makes under like $80,000, if, if you're only getting $6,000, that's still not going to cut it. Like, are you saying that because some people can afford that, that everybody should be subjected to that? Because if you're taking $6,000 out of the schools, if you're taking money out of the schools and giving it to these voucher programs, I have to come up with the other amount to send my kid to private school. 11466 is the average cost of tuition at private elementary schools. 12462 is the average cost of tuition school, actually average cost of tuition at secondary schools. Okay, let's look at another website. <sighs> what is this one? Uh, get, uh, get school review, private school review .com. Uh, Georgia private schools by tuition cost. Uh, the average private school tuition in Georgia is eleven thousand four hundred forty-four dollars per year, and that's as of twenty twenty-three. Private elementary school average tuition cost is eleven thousand three hundred sixty-three per year. And that the private high school average is twelve thousand one hundred forty nine per year. The private school with the lowest tuition cost, uh, Decatur Montessori, with a tuition of one thousand ten forty two. But even if that's the case, even if let's say you sent them to that school and you saved the rest of that money, you still defunding the public schools, and you still taking away background checks and federal protections from students in public schools. How is that the policy you say you want to support? I mean, if I'm wrong, somebody please correct me. Like, this is the thing that people don't understand, that people, why people don't like school choice. Because you do stuff like that. You put stuff like that in the bill. And if stuff like that is the bill, why the hell would I want to vote for that? Especially when, to be perfectly honest with you, as a person who went to public schools, oh my God, I wish they spent more money on public schools. We didn't have football programs. They defunded uh, music programs. Uh, uh, arts programs, everything. School choice moved it over there. And then for what? I mean, I think most of the data says that you literally have the same gradu graduation rate for people that go to school choice schools. Maybe I'll do a video on it one day. But it's ridiculous. So, <sighs> here's what I've been trying to figure out is here's what I've been trying to figure out. Does this make sense? And the answer to me sounds like a no. None of it makes any sense. It does sound like she's working in her own self-interest. Republicans want to defund public schools. Um, they don't want to end qualified immunity. Um, don't understand what defund the police means. Um, and she seems to be doing it for her. I don't, she probably won't get reelected. 
I don't truly understand what it is she's doing. Now, there's another part of this where she's being attacked online viciously by Democrats and people who claim to be on the left. And that's disgusting. And I'm not lying. Like, that's one of those things where, like, it, it makes us, those of us who are on the left, left and those of us who are part of the progressive movement, it makes us seem so much less serious. Because we have people, just like people, when they have racists on Republican side of the, the aisle, when you do this specifically to black women, because they have, they do, they do think for themselves I can't. I don't really know whether or not she's doing this for clout. I don't know whether or not she's really doing this for her own self interest. I will. I. It appears that she's not, but I'm doing my best to to assume the best and assume the positive intentions, even though it just looks like she's just trying to climb the political ladder. So. Should we be doing, should they, excuse me, not we, because there's no way I would say anything like that to her. But should people be being as disgusting as they are on Twitter? Hell no. And those people should be ridiculous. They should be ashamed of themselves. The stuff that you read on her Twitter timeline. Because she's reposting it. Emails and all. So what do I think about all this? I don't know her heart. But it appears that she's just another opportunistic politician. And the first chance that people of District 56 get, they should vote her out of office. And we'll see whether or not that's what what, what was supposed to happen or not. Because maybe she is in a really conservative, democratic district. And they want that, but... Let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe. I I did this video specifically because it seemed fishy and weird. We want to highlight more black issues in the community and things, political issues that affect black people. Um, as well as talking about news in general and as a whole. Um, and this was interesting to me specifically because there was literally two different sides of it. One side was completely supportive and and naturally, because she went over to the Republican side and she's a Democrat who defected. And the other side was just completely gross, disgusting and and just not becoming of anybody that's on the on the progressive movement. So now much love, like, comment, subscribe. Appreciate appreciate you guys for listening. Um, yeah, we're we're uh, looking to get to 50 subscribers. So help us out with that. Much love.